family. Wow, what a joy to see you here, you know. Welcome, welcome. This is the house of Rastafari 2019. It's the 16 edition. So it's with a full heart that we welcome you in the name of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Elias Last the First, I and I God and King. This is the beginning of the new edition of House of Rastafari and the, 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 the subject this year is the earth is the Lord and the fullness the rough. As you can see here, you know, we have a little explanation of what will be the topic of this year. Uh, our um, Rotterdam Sunsplash stands up for Earth 2019. So we want to be in tune, to what we want to be in harmony with what is the subject of this year, the topic. The Earth, Mother Earth. So we are going to analyze and look at this subject, this Mother Earth, from different uh, as aspects. Yes? Today we wanted to start with uh, something that is so peculiar in Rastafari liberty, that is the connection with nature. Rastaman, from time to time, has been taking, you know, um, a time of separation and has been going up in the hill to separate from Babylon, you know. The elders used to say, leave out Babylon, leave out Babylon and come. So that's why we're here with the first topic of this 2019 edition, that is Rasman upon the Hills. We have Ras Ibi here with I and I, that is, that is going to talk, is going to reason, is going to share with us about the meaning of going up in the hills to find what, to find who, and wh how do the Rastafari people live and used to live, used to eat up in the hills. So this is just the beginning and um, I don't want to go with no further introduction and I want to, to, to leave the word to Rasaibin and obviously please remember that this is not a lesson but this is a reasoning so everybody else is welcome with questions and uh, observation so it is good for I and I to be here to have this space to reason yes so questions are welcome and uh, love is welcome and uh, a nice smile is always the most welcome. Give thanks and praises. Rasaibi, take it in. Rastafari, greetings of perfect peace, perfect love. Uh, it's a blessing, as Ras Julio is saying here also, to be forward, not to be back here, but to be forward here, because it's a new year, a new time. So we're here, and uh, like the Ras is saying, our focus on our is for Mama Earth this precious thing that we are standing on that most people treat like dirt. So Rastaman tradition from early days is Rastaman used to go up in the hills and that's what we will reason about today. Why? Why did the Rastaman go up in the hills? Rastaman was not the first man and woman to tread up in the hills. That's been the tradition in all spiritual traditions from early times. That whenever people want to separate themselves from their larger crowds, one would turn to the hills, to the valleys, to the forests, to the deserts, to get seclusion and therefore higher meditation. So Rastaman also in Jamaica, with the Rastaman trod up, from 1930s, there, there was a tradition long before the Rastaman, that man, the so-called Maroons, they used to go up in the hills, run out of the slave plantations as soon as they could, and run up in, run up in the hills to get some freedom. So that's, that was the same issue for the Rastaman, because when three men who got the vision at the same time, 1930, and started to block the zone that Emperor Haile Selassie is the fulfillment of prophecy, then uh, they were shown by society, the colonial administration of the islands, you know, and uh, really to survive the persecution, one had to withdraw from the society by own choice as well as by, na by force. So, um, and many Rastaman, when they trod up the hills, they break the connection totally with the system. They would not eat any processed food, they would not wear any clothes that the system had, they would not ride on public transport. So one would make, they would make their clothes out of sack, 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 crocus bags, I think they call it. You know, just cut them up 
make a gown out of it, and these type of things. Make their own sandals. Rastaman come very, very independent through these years of hill tradition. Rastaman learned to make everything from nothing, basically. So, being up in the hills now, what do one eat? Firstly, obviously, there is wild fruits, wild berries, and things like this. Um, squeezing out, blending, making juices. Rastaman was even shunning and not having a, even possibility with electric, so these kind of new inventions like blenders and these, these things, they wasn't there. So Rastaman squeezed out the juice out of fruits and vegetables to get nutrition and learn this precious thing we call italivity. Ital derived from the word vital. The Rastaman talk is an I talk, so we put in the I, Rastafari, in everything we, we do. So, um, and um, yeah, Rastaman, when Rastaman make this tradition now and go up in the hills and leave out of the system and the Babylon ways, obviously the Rastaman is looked upon as a madman. He had no wish to full take, to partake of the system, so he's looked upon as a madman. They, was called, they used to call Rasta the black heart man. They used to scare the little children to be, watch out for the black heart man who would come and take them away, eat them up even. So, when Rasta man go up in the hills now and live in this liberty, he's not drinking anything out of the type tap water for instance. Rastaman used to shun tap water and just drink ital water, spring water or coconut water for instance, being organic water. And uh, the coconut itself would be one of the most precious things for the ital Rastaman as it's provided cups. It's very hard, the coconut, so it makes beautiful cups and utensils, what we call ital. Yeah, and the flesh of the coconut, the ital flesh that Rastaman eat, no meats, but that is the original flesh. That's also very nutritious and so so forth. Also, when it comes to oil, Rastaman didn't go to shop. There was times when Rastaman couldn't even enter the shop. They don't want to see a dreadlock Rastaman in the shop. So, oil, for instance, Rastaman used to use the coconut and boil the, boil the coconut down to oil and use that. So the coconut and the next thing very, very precious and used was the calabash. The calabash was something where it come in all sizes and it's used for cups, for bowls, for plates, uh, carrying anything inside. And uh, Rastaman uh, was shunning the use of salt. Many Rastaman totally stopped using salt, for instance. That was known that salt is something that when Rastaman said this, this was very groundbreaking and a lot of people thought it is crazy. Why, why, why would you not eat salt? But later on, even Western scientists have realized and I think they have also special... Uh, can we change the sound a little bit? Uh, they have realized also that a high intake of salt, for instance, is not good at all for your blood and for your temple. So, same, same when it comes to spices, Rastaman don't really go to shop and buy spices, but Rastaman eat out of creation and there's so much nice things to spice with, like pepper, fresh pepper, thyme, oregano, pimento, ginger. In Caribbean there's a lot of spices. Yeah. Uh, so then, in the drinking also, Rastaman wasn't really buying the black tea, the normal black tea that people use, but Rastaman was drinking bush tea. And bush tea is really any tea out of made out of bush. <laughs> and there's very much healthy things out there. Nutrition-wise, regenerative, healing, calming, preventive, a lot of good medicine, bush tea. And uh, when it comes to washing, Rastaman don't really go to shop and buy the salt. Because Rastaman wasn't welcome in the shop. So Rastaman created his own soaps, his own shampoos, also from natural material. Uh, using, for instance, aloe vera, aloe vera leaves and cactus leaves. The cactus fig leaves make a wonderful shampoo. Yeah, look at them on them. <laughs> and... Uh, the, uh, when it comes to food production, Rastaman don't really need much in terms of, of tools. 
Rastaman were sing simple man, down to earth, and the most tools that was needed was basically a cutlass, maybe a hoe. And with that, most works can be done in small-scale farming in the countryside and in the hillside. You want to say something? You want to jump in something? Yes, I. Yes, I. Give thanks, Rasaibi. And what we are looking at is is a, is, a, is an alternative way of life. Yes, Rastafari is um, Rastafari is not a religion. It's a way of life. That's how we we define it. You know. So we we wanted to speak about the going up in the hills because Rastaman go up in the hills to create and to find an alternative to Babylon. And um, uh, when Babylon gets really hot, as we say, you know, and uh, the situation gets stressful also for the Rastaman, because as Rastabi was saying, you know, it was not an easy life. It was not like now. The redlocks were not allowed. You know, Rastaman could not even walk in the in the main street. He could not even take a bus. You know, so it was a very difficult life for Rastaman. And uh, it was even difficult to have families because uh, during the 40s, the 50s, you know, it w they were a really hardcore time, and and most of the Rastaman were uh, were by themselves because sometimes and often I would say it was even difficult to find families because Rastaman was living up in the hills, you know, in a very uh, in a very simple way. Yes, the 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 disciplined life of the Rastaman often was not really uh, welcome even from uh, from 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 women for partners so it was even difficult to have a family so Rasaman was on his own but I want to ask to Rasaibi this solitude this separation what and how do you think has has benefited the spiritual research of the Rastaman Okay, um, usually it's in seclusion where one find greater spiritual strength, greater spiritual insight. And those years, inception years of Rastafari, I think it was needed to reach where we are today. To Ayman, Rasta come like Rasta tradition is like from the forest to the palace. We come from a tradition where Ainai was really persecuted. The Rastafari, the first 36 years of, of the Rastafari tradition, for instance, in Jamaica, Rastafari was very persecuted. Rastafari was looked upon as the scum of the earth. And his first, and those 36 years, I'm counting from the coronation of his Imperial Majesty, 2nd of November 1930, till the visit of his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie to Jamaica 1966. Those 36 years represent 360 degrees, a full circle. So Rasta had to go through that circle of persecution to even strengthen Ainai self in Ainai Livitis. If it was be been too easy, Rasta wouldn't be here today. So we had to go through those years of persecution to reach this, this year. And those years also led to a greater spiritual insight, greater vision when then Rastaman would carry with him, even coming down to the cities again and coming down to more normal life if we talk in terms like that. Yes, give thanks, because maybe it's important to give to give a, 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 a little spirit, um, a little historical context, okay? We are looking at uh, Rastaman going up in the hills. There was a community called Pinnacle. Pinnacle was an independent community where thousands and thousands of Rastafari would live together. Okay? In 1945, Pinnacle was raided by the police. So all the Rastaman and Rasta women that were living up in Pinnacle, they, 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 they flew down and they, they get back into the city, okay? into the town, into the ghettos. Kingston, Montego Bay, and uh, that actually was was a, 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 an important turning point for the movement because what happened is that all these Rastafari man and woman 
now in the town they they, they, they they facilitate the proliferation of Rastafari movement the spreading of Rastafari ideology the the, the Rastafari gospel as to speak yes so it was also important because now after Pinnacle the people go back and uh, into the town is, is is the shanty town Rasta so you're looking at the um, the, the raising of uh, uh, Rasta camp Rasta yard Rasta camp were were fundamental for uh, Rastafari um, for, et for 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 the growing of Rastafari movement because in the Rasta camp that there were basically some yards yeah in the in the in the in the in the forefront of the house of some prominent Rastafari you would find many many people that they would live together and uh, some of them living together some of them some spending some time together you would have food you would have reasoning so you have spiritual food you have physical food you have ganja you have Bible so you have reasoning you have a Bible class you have drumming you have Naya Bingi so that was like the university for Rastafari what happened now is that Babylon is not easy you know so Babylon start to raid the Rastafari camp in Kingston eh? in Montego Bay so what happened is that the Rastafari people say all right so this is too much so we leave Babylon and we go up in the hills so when they go up in the hills Rastaman find their own Zion and it, it, this Zion is not is not a, a abstract thing Zion is a dimension of love is a dimension of sharing is a dimension of living um, in harmony and in tune with nature because it is it is true nature through this contact with this with this planet earth this beautiful planet earth that we 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 could say we could re we reconcile with the divine inside i and i yes so rasaman was living uh, in in tune with creation and um, and um, there were some people that were not wearing clothes yeah some people was 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 so so into the nature that they were even talking and speaking like like birds and singing like birds we would call them the bird eyes yes what rastaman called the bird eyes so they would sing in a in a similar way to birds because rastaman was really one with the elements and that 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 oneness that unique state of mind and state of experience of life uh, has shaped the rastafari liberty until now because if here now we're talking about idle foods yeah we're talking about uh, holistic attitude to life we're talking about love healing uh, staying close to nature is because the rastaman in the past has decided to go up in the hills so so that is a crucial a crucial side a crucial page of i and i history and uh, and uh, and i want to i want to i would like to ask now to ras ibi what was your experience because we know that you were in jamaica for a good amount of time and it also happens for you to be up in the hills with the rastaman them with the rastafari elders so i would like if the i could share a little bit how was the living i guess there was farming i guess there was even simple life up, 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 up in the hills in Jamaica. Rastafari, yeah, that's a simple life. That's what Rasta live. Not a complicated life. We learn that li life is not really complicated. It's men and people complicate themselves and life. So living up in the hills was very beautiful experience, and I've done it many, many times. Even now, I live living in the hills, but I live in 500 kilometers south of Addis Ababa in the hills in Ethiopia. But I'm still in the hills, and uh, it's a very simple life, you know. We like we 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 discussing saying those things we eating out of creation drinking out of creation there is no clock there is no mobile but today people have mobile and still live in the hills but you're living up in the hills and sometimes seclusion also bring you to this mystical insight of oneness oneness of with the creator and creation 
and you know say so everything is possible within this so this oneness that Rastafari now is here because Rastaman in the world today right where we reach from such time to this time is that Rastaman trod from the forest to the palace there was years that as I said before we were shunned and we was looked down upon and today kings of the earth they like to come see us we had so many prin presidents and princes and princesses come visit our, our communities in Jamaica in Ethiopia they, and Rastaman has brought so much to the world and still are bringing yeah not just the we used to call it ital food today they call it vegan food for instance yeah Rastaman have brought a lot of concepts to the world including what we are here for enjoying reggae music and good life and the unity that was Julio is talking about also. This unity is, is an inclusive unity. It's not a very just me. That's why Rasta talk in terms of I. We say I and I, not me and you. It's not a separation. We're talking about I and the I and I. We are all I. So I and I, we like to include the whole of creation into this unity of love and oneness. Yeah? That is Rastaman vision, Rastaman work. We have, to, we have to bring forward, not bring back. We have to bring forward creation to a state of oneness. The Mama Earth is suffering because people is not taking care of Mama Earth. We know this is the theme of the, this festival and I will block those sounds because we are here to show people how to live good and how we can live in good, good life with one another. Yeah? So uh, I would see, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody who has some question, like to ask something concerning Rastaman in the hills. So in general about our trod here. Anyone have a question? No questions? Russ, do you really have a question? I always have a question. <laughs> Russ Ibi, uh, do you think it's still important right now a form of separation, a form of seclusion, and uh, to which extent can help our spiritual life or our psychological uh, well-being? Okay, um, I feel there's a time and a place for everything. For every person there's a time and place. So as there's a time to plant, there's a time to reap. There's a plant to, time to rise, there's a time to rest. So there's, there comes time also in one's personal development that one might feel that one needs to seclude oneself, separate oneself for a time to receive certain answers certain fullness in one's liberty yeah. right but, um, next question how do you think we could reconcile the the, the daily the day-to-day -day life yeah the nowadays life with uh, with some time for ourselves how can we let's go into the practical how can we during our daily routine how can we take some time for ourselves uh, how much time should we take for ourselves uh, because i don't think it is necessary for everybody for all the time to go up in the hills <laughs> yeah we cannot do it so there is a time and place for everything as as the i say but maybe even during our routine with our jobs and our family and our runnings i think it's still important to take some time for for ourselves all right uh, the hills is not only a physical place by the way the hills also is that higher consciousness within oneself the higher regions within oneself so there is always time when one, if one is in tune with oneself one would know when one need to eat when you need to rest when you need time for meditation so the best thing we can do is to get to know ourselves yes to find get to know how we function because and to, to live a balanced life my balance is maybe a different from an next person's balance we have to find our own balance what is good for I within I yes Say again. Come, I didn't hear that. I, yes, something like that. Aren't we always getting to know ourselves if it's I and I? 
or I and I, when we say I and I, is we, we try to not separate me and you, we and them, but I, yeah, I, uh, the I, the I, the I, so we're all within that concept of I. We can get to know ourselves within I, just like that. Yeah? Just to go back on that, do you mean like universal consciousness? So like if one person's doing some work, then it, it has a, an energetic effect on other people? <laughs> we are all one. Yes. Yes. But it starts within I. They say, if you can't love yourself, it's hard to love somebody else. It's not an egoistic thing. You have to love yourself first. Yeah? Then you can really love the next one. Yeah? Yes, that is why we wanted to touch this subject today. Because when Rastaman go up in the hills, it's not for an egoistic need. Yeah, this is a very important point, I think. You know, we know that in different spiritual traditions of this planet, there is uh, meditation, there is uh, uh, separation, you know, you find it in Christianity, you find it in Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, all spiritual tradition has a time on, all, on one side, yes? So that is not something that the person would do because he's just sick and tired eh? and doesn't want anything to do um, with the world in an egoistic sense okay what is what is what is what i think what we learn from the ancients from the elders is that when you reconcile with your within yourself and when you explore more the depths of your soul of your mind yes you reconcile with everybody else so you you sink in your your inner person yeah to know better and to consequently love more the per the people around you yes that's why rasaivi was saying you have to love yourself in order to love anybody else so people going up in the hills rasaman going up in the hills when he comes down in town he shares what he has inside he shares what what he explored and what, uh, what he was able to find into himself in order to help one another towards a global, a universal awakening. So that is the point. It's different from the person that is just uh, uh, rejecting society because hate society. Yes, is th that is a different thing. Rastaman foundation of separation is love. Is going into yourself to expand yourself, to become larger, to become bigger, so you can include the pain of anybody else. You can include the suffering of the people that, especially in a context like Jamaica, full of contradictions, full of suffering, there was people really, really, really suffering for a need of liberation. Yes, liberation, physical liberation, mental liberation, historical liberation. Yes, so the Rastaman, when he comes back down into town, you know, he shares with the people what he has explored, what he has found himself. If we look at the, at the chronic we look at the, at, the, at the testimonies of the ancients when they talk about their time in, up in the hills they refer to an inner journey to explore better the realms of the Most High yes so that is the that is the inner journey that is the inner journey and uh, and uh, and that's why we wanted to start the edition of this year you know with living up in the hills we're not only talking about eating raw food or eating greens and sleeping under the trees which is also important but we are ta we, we're looking at the at the broader picture the larger picture yes so so it is an it is a oneness it's a oneness that that also has brought people from different back, social background together. Because remember, up in the hills, it was not only the the the, the youth from the ghetto, the rastaman from the ghetto that would run up in the hill. At one point, we have we have you know the sons of the middle class, Jamaican middle class, running up in the hills, and start to dread up 
start to eat idle, live idle. Yes, so it was not, not only um, a phenomenon occurring amongst uh, poor people. At one point in Jamaica, especially during the 60s, we also have the rich kids running up on the hills and become idle youth, walking bare feet, yeah? farming. It was the first time in their life they learned farming. So the Rastaman become the farmers of this universe. Yes? And uh, a lot of things that now they are kind of out there, you know, under the eyes of everybody, like holistic medicine, natural medicine, you know, uh, living well, you know, uh, meditation, the fact that meditation helps your mind, calming and relaxing helps your mind well. Let me tell you that the Rastaman, the Rastaman was stuck in those things from a long time, and he did not learn it on no books. If not on his book of his own life, his own experience, that's why Rastaman talks of what he lives. So this is also to say that 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 the Rastaman was also a pioneer in certain things uh, that we are so much talking of today, and also that brought us today here in this beautiful environment. So any any anybody else? Yes, my brother. Thanks. On this very important point, here's a factor that caused me some confusion. When we talk about and we hear about life up in the hills for the Rastaman, it makes sense to me. The self-sufficient slash community life, this oneness with nature and with Rasta and ethical and Christian values, it makes sense. However, uh, I don't understand uh, fully if this life with nature, with this oneness up in the hills, should be seen as more of a sort of a pilgrimage and a stage that people go through to educate themselves spiritually and in community. And then they go back down to Babylon and they go back down to the big city life. Uh, can they? have these values, transformed values by this experience and come back down and be, if this is possible, and be Rasta business people, Rasta politicians, Rasta engineers and interact with this, all of these different economic classes and interests that happen in, in downtown in Babylon or if they should instead really look up in the hills as a goal for life and this is Zion and just flee Babylon or should there be an acceptance of interaction and fulfillment within the city, within Babylon. Give thanks, very good question. Give thanks. Rasavi, you want to say something about it? Yeah, you see, the tradition of going to the hills, it's not every Rastaman went up to the hills. There was time when, in the early years, when nearly every Rastaman had to go up in the hills, even for their survival. Yeah, there was times when the Prime Minister of Jamaica ordered to bring in all Rastas dead or alive. People were given, they were paid to bring in a Rastaman dead or alive. Yeah? Yeah, so those times Rastaman had to flee to the hills to even keep alive, yeah? Like we have been reasoning, the, the going to the hills is a spiritual trod, and it's an inner trod, not just the physical hills alone, you know? And going into a state of meditation and going into solitude is also preparing yourself for the days ahead, right? If your days is in down in the system, yeah, surely you will take your meditation that you receive up from the time you spend up in the hills. Going down to the city, you surely can make use of that calmness, of that oneness, of that, that vision that you have. You know, but Rastaman in general, we look upon city like, yeah, many people for certain reasons have to be in the city for their daily survival, for their, their, their children to go to school, for instance. It's one of those things where you usually bring families and man and woman closer to town when your children have to start to school. You know, so, but we learn to flex. We learn in life to flex between the, the hills and the, the countryside and the city life. And and live in, live it up as much as possible in all in all places. So yes, I do think that meditation, spiritual practice is very important, and you can take that with you in all your life, your daily life. Yeah. Yes, truly, truly. 
Yeah, I just want to, well, Rasabi, Rasabi says it all, you know, I totally agree. I just want to add uh, a personal memory, you know, because sometimes it was also important to share personal experience. When I was a youth and I was coming into Rastafari, you know, as a young, a young man, you know, from Italy, my country, you know, not many Rastaman were there. So uh, I was blessed, you know, I started to travel and I started to meet Rastaman around. And one of the first things that struck me when I was a youth, seeing elder, Rastaman elder, you know, people that were in the levity from a good amount of years, you know, so they had a, a strong foundation of Rastafari. Well, they could be the same, they were the same person, they could have been in the countryside, in the hills, in the, in the center of downtown Las Vegas or New York, Manhattan, you know, anywhere else in the world, they would have been the same person. They were the same person, they would have behaved in the same way. You know, the environment would have not changed them. I have seen Rastama in the, in the center of London, you know, and then I've seen people, Rastaman, in Ethiopia, in Jamaica, up in the hills, you know. The same people would be the same, the same, you know. So that is the foundation of Rastafari. And you, uh, despite the environment around you, what you have learned into your meditation, as Rast Ibi say, you know, it shaped your behavior. So just the way you would see Bob Marley, you know, he was a millionaire but he would go around with a simple shirt, you know, a simple pants, and he would take care of his people, of his family, of his band, of his group. Yeah, he was a simple man, but he was a very rich man, yes? When he go back to, to Jamaica, he go up to nine miles and visit maybe his family friends so when he was a youth. Bob Marley would always, would, would always define himself as a, as a, as a farmer. You understand? So it's that original simplicity that you keep with you anywhere you go. Any more questions? Anyone have anything? Well, give thanks, give thanks for your presence, you know, give thanks for everybody here. Um, please, before to go, collect some of this, yeah? Take one with you, put it in your pocket. This is a program of the seminars of the House of Rastafari 2019. So you can keep it with you, and you can know what's happening. We're gonna be here mostly every day at 5 o'clock, except for, for two afternoons that we will be in the Reggae University the area so if you feel a good vibe you know please come and join the session of the house of rastafari we're gonna start with naya bingi every day and then we were we, we will have rasta seminars if you are hungry or thirsty not only in a spiritual sense but also in a physical sense there is here there's a kitchen rastafari kitchen with idle food and fresh juice and uh, please you know it's your house just step through there and you will find a family to welcome you yes give thanks once again give thanks Rasai. thanksgiving for everyone present I and you're welcome here anytime anytime uh, when we are here please feel free to come talk with i and i yeah you're welcome it's like we are here for i and i rastafari Oh, one last thing, sorry, I forgot. Here we have some books, you know, you can come here anytime during the day or night. You can consult these books. These books here are to consult, they're not on sale. And so you can sit here, you know, all the time that you want and you can just go through them and you can, you are free to speak with anybody of I and I, yeah? And then we also have some books on sale, but he, he, these books here, you know, you, you, you can just go through them, you know, just sit here and enjoy the vibe. Yes, Rastafari blessings, one love.